the way I look at the treaty process that I'm putting forward based on the unlawful uh, invasion and occupation we're suffering under at the moment in order to stop that. Uh, I'm saying a treaty is necessary and a treaty recognises our sovereign right in country. In terms of that becoming a functional reality, I've got an, a, a treaty, an agenda that needs to be fulfilled and the way in which those processes would work in terms of uh, um, um, resourcing those infrastructures, elders, men's business, women's business and initiations. Uh, in terms of, of doing that and understanding the way of title processes, what I'm saying is that uh, if every black boy in this country could treat in 100 people in this country, on that basis, we would run the country. So it's a real option. I'm saying it's the only real option. Uh, the, the, the options are being presented by Everton. Right, I'm not going to go that far. I don't reckon. And what I reckon some people don't seem to realise is that in terms of the environment, but you've got Australia about to open up more coal mines and they open up more uranium mines and they're accusing us of being pedophiles so they can take away our native title rights so they can go in the Northern Territory and in, in, in Queensland like, you know, even old Pearson that everyone thought was selling out has been overridden by the Queensland state government on, on what they want to do in terms of their native title rights up there. It's happening right across the country in devastating fashion. In the Kimberley it's happening, there's a whole big gas thing going on there. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, um, it's not sustainable. And Blackwater way in terms of, of doing these infrastructures it, it is the only sustainable way of, of doing it. So the sooner we get on with it, the better. And by going to that website, these websites, we can begin to do that. Um, and it's essential we do it for not just our, our problems, the whole world comes through a pretty devastating situation. The way I do treaty, I treaty, I am Vajan Kumanarajawa and Uncle Kabul. Son of Uber, the tribe and uncle custodian of the land in Jerba. That is my land, that is my law. If that is Stradbroke Island within Morton Bay on Brisbane, and we also come under the Garamun Danami, which is the regional group that comes under the Bunyanak Festival, and therein lies your layered title. You'll see the layers going in and out there. Uh, and in terms of what people do in terms of treaty with me, when they treat him with me, then people know me there, and you being a treaty member shows that you are seeking the absolute truth and spiritual oneness, and you need to be assisted in what you do in my country and, and looked after. It's as simple as that. And uh, in terms of uh, yeah, and, and for that we ask you to resource us to make it happen as it should be happening. And I'm saying that every black fellow can do this and should be doing this. Treating in non-Indigenous people worldwide, yes, as many as we can get to recognise our sovereignty and resource us so we can do it right. In terms of why I do treaty business, my mother wrote me a poem when I was about 11 or 12 of It's called Son of Mine to Dennis. My son, your troubled eyes search mine, puzzled and hurt by colour line. Your black skin soft as velvet shine, what can I tell you, son of mine? I could tell you of heartbreak, hatred blind. I could tell you of crimes that shame mankind, of brutal wrongs and deeds malign. Of rape and murder, son of mine. But I'll tell them instead of brave and fine, and lives of black and white and fine, and men in brotherhood and wine. This I will tell you, son of mine. 
So, um, in terms of my mother giving me law, that's a significant part of my law. In terms of that, thus the tree. I do have an agenda that we need to fulfill, and I'm saying that it's a universal agenda. We go to respiration, that's where my mother's property is. When my brother died, she said she wanted him buried there. We buried him there. When my grandchild died, we buried him there. When she died, we buried her there. We occupy that land. We have no white title to it. We say it's ours, you prove it's not ours. My son has done the same thing with the curve down the road. On the off. Um, these points that need to happen, that's to restore her property, owning our own information. My mother has 56 boxes of information in the Prior Library in Queensland, and there's other information at the local museum <coughs> on Strabic Island, where I come from. And those information, we are trying to get control, we, we want to maintain control of those information so that we determine who gets that information and how we teach you. Because what has happened is anthropologists, archaeologists, etc., academics coming in, writing our communities for our, all our information, and then when they have no title regimes going down, they, the, and the mining companies want to mine somewhere, <coughs> or whatever, they use those information against us. People, to tell you the truth, black is a, a loss as to what to do unless they get some support. And I'm saying this is the way to do it. By recognition, to recognise our sovereignty, you necessarily have to recognise that they're acting illegally, unlawfully against us. And by the way, this, does anyone know about the law of the land and the law of the sea? Admiralty law. Okay. In terms of how Britain went out into the out conquered in Canada, the United States, New Zealand, and Australia, uh, they uh, used Admiralty law to do that. And what you're essentially governed by is Admiralty law in these countries. Because the law of the land belongs to the indigenous peoples, you see. They own the common law. Right? So what you've got is admiralty law coming in, which is statute law. And by way of statute, they override your lawful right in terms of, in our case, our sovereignty and our sovereign right to country. They statute over that. And in terms of your common law right, in terms of contract and equity in Queensland, I know for sure they're overriding your common law rights in terms of contract and equity by way of statute. And it is admiralty law. And admiralty law is whatever the, the law of the sea, if you like. It has no roots in the land. You don't live in Australia, you live in Ireland, you're not living in it. Black people live in it. And in terms of treaties being not honoured and, and, and seeing that the treaty isn't the mechanism to go, yes, I'm saying the United States, Canada, New Zealand and Australia all come under that admiralty law, the law of the sea, not the law of the land. If they go back to the law of the land, we own it. Common law, contract, equity is there. Because they rule by the law of the sea, it's not getting connected, there's no connection. It's, 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 a, it's a Roman invasion and genocide. Could, could I offer just a comment? And that is that imperialism as a global construction doesn't care about law, it cares about power and the maintenance of hegemony over people for the purpose of extracting resources and, and profit. And if you look at, you know, 
South Africa under apartheid, the US, Canada, to some extent Brazil, I would even argue Palestine, as well as Australia, you're looking at variations of the same theme. So the question becomes, and, and I want to try to say this nonviolently, how do the people of the world overturn the legacy of imperial power and replace it with a different kind of moral authority and a different kind of spiritual authority? Treating it with the indigenous people, right. use our infrastructures, get the might to make it right. All right. Through that mechanism. Thank you. Under God's law. Thank you. Thank you.